Vertical play in folding knives, sometimes known as up and down play. Basically, when the knife is in the open and locked position, the blade is able to move a little bit. You might have to crank down on it pretty rough, but you can feel just a little bit of space, a little bit of wiggle room in there. It's not a 100% rock solid lockup. It does not feel like a fixed blade. It feels like it's got just a little bit of wiggle in there. This one has the same issue, except it's worse. The reason I'm making this video, however, is because there are two different types of vertical play, and it's kind of a gray area, it's kind of debated, but I wanted to get my view on it and the word out there. Yes, there's actually two different kinds, so there's two main reasons vertical play happens. Pretty much all the reasons fall under the fact that it has something to do with the locking mechanism. It's either the geometry of the tang of the blade, where it meets up with the locking mechanism. It could be the locking mechanism itself. It could be that there's a gap in there. But basically, vertical play up and down. That's doing this going up and down in this orientation from where the camera is facing. That's vertical blade play, usually, again, caused by something with the lock. We're not talking about pivot play. We're not talking about the pivot screw or pivot tension. We're talking about the vertical lock up of the knife, this type of blade play. So these two knives I have on the table right here, this one has what I argue is the worst type of blade play. This is where there's physically a gap in there. There's space for the blade to move even when it's in the open and locked position. And one of the telltale signs of that is you can hear the blade rattling around you can hear it and feel it when you shake it despite not touching it, despite not touching the locking mechanism, because there's room in there for it to move. Now, the other type of vertical play, which I argue is not as bad, although vertical play is never a good thing, I think this is more manageable. There is no gap in there, nothing wrong really with the geometry of the mechanism or the blade itself, nothing wrong with the stop pin as far as I know, but because the tension is what I would argue subpar, it's not tight enough. If you apply enough force to it, if you give it enough tension, you can feel it start to wiggle. It's not as bad as this one with the gap in there, I believe, but there's still a little wiggle in there. Something in there, it's just a little something. It's a little something that's not a big deal. Many, many, many folding knives of all price ranges, all sizes, all shapes have this. They usually have something in there. If you apply enough force, you can feel it move. Now again, if I freely shake this, I can't hear it or feel it playing, but when I apply enough force, there it is. The reason for this is because the tension on the locking mechanism, this one happens to be a liner lock, is not tight enough, by my standards anyway. If it was tight enough and it was really forced in there, it would be much more difficult, if not basically impossible, to get the blade to move at all, despite not touching the locking mechanism, despite having it in the open and locked position. But there's just a little something in there if I really, really, really crank down on there and try to find it. I'm literally moving the locking mechanism mechanism with the amount of force I'm applying on the blade. If I were able to see this a lot more sensitively, we'd see that liner lock also moving because we're kind of shoving it back out of the way with the force we're applying. So basically nothing wrong with the mechanism other than it could be tightened. If we tightened this locking mechanism, if we popped this guy open, we bent that liner forward a little bit more, slapped it back together, we'd probably be able to get rid of the up and down play this knife has. That's how you adjust it with liner locks anyway. With lockbacks, you can actually adjust the same issue by tightening the torsion bar on the inside of it, although it's a little bit more tricky, and I don't recommend you do that. Do that at your own risk. If you are going to do it, watch a video on it first, do your research. I wouldn't just grab some pliers and start bending it, but you can technically adjust it as well with a lockback knife. However, this is one of those cases where this lockback knife, I cannot really do anything to fix this blade play, not because it's a lockback, but because, again, it's a different type of blade play issue. There's actually a physical gap in there. There's space that's allowing it to move because the timing on the parts is not 100% there. It's just a little bit off. Now, this is pretty common with lockbacks. In fact, in order for lockbacks to work correctly, I believe they do actually need a little bit of space in there, but this is an example of a lockback that's just a little sloppy. It's really, really noisy. There's obviously a lot of movement there, but I 
regardless of which vertical play you have, it's not that big of a deal, especially for little EDC knives like this. It doesn't mean your knives are going to close on you. Don't freak out just because you have a little bit of wiggle room. It doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong. It could be that all of these Kershaw hatches right here have that same issue. That's just how it's constructed. It doesn't mean it's constructed correctly. It doesn't mean any of them are constructed correctly. It just means that's how their blueprints are. That's how they all are. So whether it has a problem or not, yes and no, maybe it just kind of depends. Maybe this one's a lemon. Maybe it's not. This is the only one I've handled, so I can't really tell, but I would not be surprised if all the other Kershaw hatches I tried had some kind of vertical play one way or the other. That being said, back in the day, I used to be really bothered by blade play, but the more I got into knives and as the years went on, as I used them and as I carried them more, I kind of figured out it's really not a big deal. Unless you're in some kind of life-threatening situation, you absolutely do not want your knife closing on you. It, even then, it, it's really not that big of a deal. Because what are you doing with your knives to the point that would cause your locking mechanism to fail? Are you sticking this in a tree and, and applying like 250 pounds to it or something? What, what do you need a locking mechanism to lock up that tight for? But it can be annoying. Rattling and shaking and vibrating all these things yeah it, it, it can be bothersome vertical play regardless of which kind it is it's somewhat of a warning sign that something is wrong and something could go wrong under the wrong circumstances but again going back to the two different kinds we have here not a tight enough locking mechanism poor geometry in the locking mechanism and or blade do you notice a difference between these types of blade plays you have your own examples of knives that had either one of these issues before let me know in the comments down below thank you so much for watching feel free to subscribe at that little bell notification if you do not want to miss weekly knife and gun videos manix out